All right, so uh, we've got some functionality going on. I want to take some time to now customize the look of our project, uh, get us some new colors and, and all of that to really make it look unique uh, because I think uh, that would be nice. You're all writing this code, you want to put your own mark on it. Uh, so customization of colors is one possible way. Uh, so here's what we'll do. We'll go to our web browser. We'll go back. We'll go back a while. We'll go back to jQueryMobile.com. Remember, at jQueryMobile.com is the documentation about using jQuery Mobile, this mobile framework for creating a mobile app quickly. It's not the only one out there, but it's one of the big ones, jQuery Mobile. So here's where we look up the demos about how everything works, and then the API documentation, which tells you in even more detail how everything works. But we're going to use a brand new screen from this uh, resource. Let's click where it says Themes. Themes at the top. On the top menu, click on Themes. This is the Theme Roller. Welcome to the theme roller. Create up to 26 theme swatches lettered from A to Z, each with a unique color scheme, then mix and match for unlimited possibilities. Uh, we haven't done it too much, but do you remember we have data dash roll equals button, data dash roll equals page. We haven't done very much with data dash theme equals something. We usually either don't say anything or we say data theme equals A. Well, the A theme is this basic gray, black and white, simple theme. We actually can, can create a data theme X, let's say. And on the X theme, it's all dark and blue colors and you know, dangerous looking. And then on theme, we can create a th data theme J. And on J, we could change that to a whole other color palette. Basically, we have the 26 letters of the alphabet to create these different color palettes that we can then activate and use whenever we write data theme equals something. So let's get rolling. Theme A, theme B. This is a basic uh, screen that has all the possible widgets of jQuery Mobile, the basic colors. And look at this. Let's say I want a cool background color of red. From the top, I can drag the red color into the background, and now my app will have a red background. My top bar will have an orange color. These buttons will be yellow, for example. So it's a very cool, simple drag-and-drop interface to define new colors. So let me show you the different things we've got here. Then we'll take some time to create a, a color scheme, and then we'll apply it to our project. So you can drag-and-drop. But also, on the left side, we can specifically edit elements of the body, we can edit the buttons, we can edit the page. If you open the page section, we can define a text color here. So if you click text color and say, my text will be purple. The way this color wheel works, if you're not used to graphic software, you choose the color on the outside wheel, the hue, I want blue. And then you choose the saturation in the cube. You drag the, the, in, the in the cube here. Because if you keep it on the top right, it will be white, even if you always select a different color. You have to choose the color family along the ring. And then in the cube, you choose how strong the color is, how much white it has, how much black it has, or gray. Let's say my text is going to be like a dark blue. Text shadow, background, border. So again, when you drag and drop these colors, they also change out here.
So we can edit aspects of the page, of the header and footer, text color, text shadow, background, of the body itself, links, under link color we have a plus so we can check what's the color of the link before you click on it, the color of the link when you hover over it, the color of the link once you've clicked it and it's active, and the color of the link after you've clicked it and visited it. So you can also drag from the right into these boxes here. So you have a bunch of built-in colors at the top, but that shade of red might not be the, your shade of red, the shade of red of your company. So we can, we can always mix a color. Um, you can start with a particular color from the top strip and then drag it into an, an element here, and then click on the color and then further refine and define the color. If you already know your color code, if you've def de designed it in Photoshop or other graphic software and you get your color code, your hex value, you can add it directly. And let me show you something fun here. If you go to the website badass.io, you will get all of these colors that, based on the hexadecimal values, spell things. So that's actually bada55.io. And here you will see all of these colors, like coffee. The color coffee in HTML is not a coffee color, it's blue. The color ebolas is orange, FBI. LOL, which is 101. Totoro. Google, which is 60061E. Google. Loaded. So this is just something very nerdy for graphic designers. Uh, you go to this website and you can look up these colors um, that almost look pronounceable. You also have here within the theme roller at the top Adobe Cooler swatches. If you click at the top right there, you get these color, these themes that are kind of color coordinated pretty well. You can click to load up those colors and then apply them to your project. Um, if you have the code, the six digit code, or you would go to the left side and what particular element? Let's say the body. You go to the body and you're going to change the background color. So you would get the six digit code and put it into that value there. Make sure you have the pound symbol and then the color. Yeah, because right now, this is what the color of our project looks like. Very boring gray. Mm -hmm. 
it would mu look much nicer. Like so now that. you're playing with the colors. It's just seeing, you know, what you like best. Color yeah. Best color. Yeah, and right here we have all of these abilities. Like if you want to change this button right here. So now we we have these new colors. When we're done designing a color, then we will see. Well, how do we add it to our project? That's the next thing. We will add it to our project so then it doesn't look so boring. So, um, also one more question. Um, yes. The on 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 the the on our school website the the icon looks so much stand out, looks so much better when you click on it. On which website? On the, the school website, the icons. Like for, for for example, the home icon. It looks so much. On the school's better. website here. Yes. It's so much better than on my phone. <laughs> so these icons and these links and such? Uh, of the, of the school, obviously. Oh, on the, on the app, yes. on the app itself. Yes. Um, add, compared to the emulator or the app itself? Or what do you mean? Uh, compared to the emulator, it looks so much better than on my phone. Yeah. Because the emulator looks so much more stand out. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I think it has to do also with the kind of colors and backgrounds and other design design um, choices that were made. We haven't quite talked a lot about design choices here just yet, uh, so that's why maybe it doesn't look as nice as it could or it doesn't stand out, just because we've been concentrating a lot on what's the code, or the right framework, the command, and all of that. Once we've got that, then we'll be talking more about uh, the design of it because maybe we maybe this text should be a little bit larger when we work with more CSS we'll, we'll work with that right now we're getting toward that by starting to maybe customize the colors a bit so this is a this is a big package there's many aspects remember the Android website had um, develop design distribute those three main sections on developer.android.com there was develop design distribute we've been talking about a lot of development writing a bunch of code there's also the design aspect of it, and then eventually distributing it, publishing it. So there's a lot we just need to, to, to do still. That's why it's a three-month class. So I'm going to give everyone maybe one or two more minutes at the most, pick some cool colors. And notice here we have, by default, A, B, and C. You can store, like right here, three, three colors. Then when, when we're in the app, we can have a screen look a certain way by having data theme equals A. And then we can have a different screen look differently by marking that particular screen data theme equals B. So that other screen will look different because I've chosen a different color scheme here. So you can choose up to 26, A, B, C, all the way up to Z. What I would recommend is, at the least, Take a moment to develop a, an A theme and a B theme. And what I'll actually do is this. I'm going to start over. It doesn't seem to be a button to start over, so I'm just going to refresh my screen. Now that I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit, I'm going to refresh my screen because what I want to do is I'm going to leave theme A plain. I might still want the A theme plain for some reason. I'm going to develop my own cool theme on B and maybe another C one just in case. So I'll, I'll, I'll have A, B, C, but A I'll keep plain, and then B, and then C. So take a moment to develop some themes, and then we'll go on, because we can share the theme, save the theme, and so forth. So take a moment to develop a theme, and we'll go on. What I did was I just refreshed my web, my web browser. I started over. Uh, that way it'll erase everything and load the screen again.
So take a moment to, do, to design a couple of colors, make it unique. This is always interesting because people have very unique senses of style. Did everyone get a chance to sign in? Now you may or may not be done, but I'll mention a couple of things, then we'll go on. This is a very cool color scheme I think that I put together. It would be a shame if I lost it. Well, I'm going to lose it if I, if I navigate away, if I refresh, if I go elsewhere. I'm going to lose it. Here's a couple of ways that you can save it. On the top right corner, we have Share. On the top right corner, go ahead and click the Share button, Share Theme Link. And what it'll do is it'll generate a unique link for your color. So you can always come back to the Theme Roller and keep editing it. So I'm going to take a moment here. Well, actually, not always. We keep this for 30 days, then it will be deleted. Download a theme to keep a copy safe. Okay, so I've got 30 days to come back to it. But there's a, there's a link that'll take me back to this editor so that I can keep making changes. Um, so you can come back, share theme, copy that, and I'm going to save it somewhere. It's just text, so I'm going to save it in a in a, in a notepad file, maybe, onto my flash drive. That way I can come back to it. But it says this is temporary, 30 days. So we have over here, download the zip file. We're going to do this, so we download our color scheme, so we have a backup of it, more importantly, so we can add it to our project. Go ahead and click download. You get this big screen that tells you how to use it. I'll read it in a moment. But at first, at the top right, it says, what, what name do you want to give this, th this theme? We'll just call this, at the top right, My Style. At the top right, select My Style. Or type My Style. And click Download Zip. When you download it, you're going to get a file, jQuery mobile theme with some numbers, probably different than mine, doesn't matter. But it's a zip file. In my case, it's 69 kilobytes, kind of big, relatively speaking. But this downloaded, it went to my desktop, and in the zip file, there's, a, there's an index, themes, images, etc. Um, I'm going to extract that to the desktop. I'm going to see what that index file has. So basically, I um, hmm. if you get this pop-up here, I'll just do copy and replace. I might have changed it a bit. Uh, it's giving me also an index file. What is this index file? Okay, so I'm going to ignore the index file. Um, okay, I am going to save that zip file to my flash drive. I don't want to lose my colors, so I'm just going to save that zip file over to my flash drive in my folder here. The way we use it 
the instructions are back. The, the instructions are in the zip file, but they're also back on the on the website. If I go back to download, now I'll read what this says. This will generate a zip file that contains both a compressed for production and uncompressed for editing version of the theme. So when we've had jQueryMobile.min.js or jQuery.min.js, it's been compressed, it's more efficient, it's ready to be used in our app, but it's very hard to read the code. The compressed production ready versions of our, of our code libraries are usually hard to work with, hard to edit. We've got the uncompressed, which will let us view the code and make changes if we need to. But since it's not compressed, it's not as efficient. Our app might load slower if we use the uncompressed version. The zip file includes both versions. To use your theme, add it together with the CSS icon file to the head of your page before the jQuery mobile structure file, like this. So there's an example here, doc type, HTML head, title, character set, viewport, blah blah blah, jQuery mobile, jQuery, and then jQuery mobile. So it's saying from your zip file, we have uh, a CSS file and an icon CSS file. And we need to add those lines of code to our project. So in the zip file, we have a folder called themes. We've got my styles. Uh, okay, see uppercase, lowercase. Uh, okay, and then we've got my style and my style dot min. So the compressed version, the more efficient version, is the one that's dot min, and the less efficient but easier to read is the dot css. And there's uppercase version, lowercase version. Just seems to be a particular naming. So I'm going to have this window open as well as the window of my project. You want to go to your project folder, apps with today's project in the WW folder. So that CSS file, my style.css, I'm going to get the one that's lowercase and min, the minified version, minimized version. I'm just going to drag it from my zip file over to my www folder of my project. Uh, I guess we should also drag this jQuery.mobile.icons.min file. Actually, not really, because that is already included in our jQuery mobile CSS. So we'll just drag the mystyle.min. We don't need also the images because those are the images that come with jQuery mobile, which we already have. Images. So all I did was I dragged mystyle.min.css. I dragged the lowercase version because I need to add the code that says use this file in our project back to notepad, to the index file, the instructions up here seem to say, okay, write your code so that we reference your my custom CSS file before the jQuery mobile stuff, apparently. So we've got on line 19. Looks like we've got a nice empty line right there. On line 19, I'm going to write link. So this is the index file. We're going to link to the style sheet that we just downloaded. So link, rel equals quotes style sheet space href quotes
and we're linking to the file which I see right here on my folder my style.min.css my style.min.css obviously if you called yours my amazing colors when you downloaded it here theme name if you called it my amazing colors then yours is going to be called something like my dash amazing dash colors dot min dot css mm. that's why I chose a very simple name it's my style dot min dot css So according to the documentation, that's what we need. As I said, we're skipping how it says also include your icons because I believe we've already got the icons inside of our jQuery mobile CSS. Uh, this example actually is mentioning to use jQuery mobile structure instead of the CSS, so that's why we're not using it. Um, so. So just to confirm, in my project in the WW folder, I added the brand new my style file, and in the code, I added my style. Now uh, we also have that directory, that directions screen. Remember the map. The map needs to have these colors as well. So that line 19, I also need to copy it into dir HTML, or else it wouldn't know to use these new colors. And I'll do the same thing on line 19 before the jQuery mobile min file. Paste the same line. The dir.html file on line 19. When I designed my theme, I left theme A alone and I used B and C. You might have used A. So if you, if you now test your results, you'll see your new colors. If you changed theme A, I didn't. I change theme B and C. So that means in my code index file line 27 section data role page data title home ID home I need to add data dash theme equals B. My brand new cool colors are in B. If you kept your colors in A you don't have to add this because it's automatically going to use A. But I made my colors in B. So you can use data dash theme B or C or D or J or X or whatever anywhere in a different screen. Or actually I see line 28. Line 28 says data theme A. So that's gonna conflict. Um, yes. How do you have the theme A theme when we have only A, B, and C theme? When we're back on the theme roller here, we have three themes A, B, C. If we want to make more, add a swatch. And now we have D and so E. So all the way to Z? Yes. Mm -hmm. So actually, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I just saw this and I realized this. Um, I was about to add data theme B to my page, line 27, but it looks like I've got headers that say data theme A. Um, so, let me try something here.
One moment, I just need to make sure it's working. Okay, so actually here, let me go over it again because this, this is not going to work exactly, unfortunately. The, for some reason, the, uh, the instructions on the website are not quite right, and I thought that, that they wouldn't make sense because what we've got is the instructions here tell us add your custom theme before the default stuff, which doesn't make sense because if it's going to go in order, each line of code line by line, why are we going to load our custom colors and then reload the original colors? Yeah, so that doesn't seem to be right. We need to complain to them to say, reverse this. Exactly. So here's what we need to do. We'll go back to our index file and instead of having on line 19, instead of having my style there, we need to have it after line 20. After, after the jQuery mobile.min.css. You should see a line after title that says jQuery mobile.min.css. We want to have the default jQuery mobile, the default jQuery mobile style first. Then we want to have our unique style after it because it's going to go that way. First the defaults, then our style. So the documentation's weird. That's one thing. The other thing is we've got we've got a uh, a built-in data theme A on line twenty-nine. So what we want is. On line, uh, on line 28, where you've got data theme A of the header, I'm going to put B because my colors are on B. And then I'm also going to put on line 27, data theme B. So I'm saying let's use the B theme as part of our main screen section. And then the also in the header B. And I can actually at this point very quickly, it's not going to fully function, but just to see if it's working, I'm going to go back to run Firefox. This is just some plain CSS that I want to see if it works. I don't need to make sure the whole app works. So I did just go run Firefox, and it seems to work. So those are the, those are the three things. Put your CSS after jQuery. Add a data theme B to the section, and on the header, data theme B. In the DIR file, too? In the DIR file as well. Well, logically, it's going to go the same way that we see here. Let me load it up. Whatever we've got on this file, we just do the same on DIR. So on DIR, it's about the same lines or so. So on line, um, instead of having my style before jQuery, take it from line 19 and put it into line 20. And then I have to go past all of this JavaScript to the very bottom. And then that is way down here on 112. On line 112, I'm going to add data-theme equals B. And then for the header also, header, data roll header, data-theme B. Does it say 
Exactly. Exactly. So that's one way to make this a whole lot easier for yourself. If you do edit theme A, you never have to do this because it's going to assume theme A. I want to leave A alone as a default just in case, and then I use B. But then I have to do the extra work of using data theme B every time I want to use that new color or C, theme C, or theme D, or theme J, or whatever. So if I look at it in Firefox briefly, quickly, I can see, okay, there it is, there's my colors. And to get the full effect, of course, then I want to run it in the browser. Oh, as I'm testing the other pages before I go on, I see that the colors are correct on the first page, but not on that page, and not on that page. So I just probably have to add the data theme as appropriate, because again, A is the default. Unless I say otherwise, A is the default. So if you don't like the colors now, then you have to go back and do the same thing and save it and put it in the folder again? Yes. So, so very good. Thinking ahead, I don't like those colors anymore. I have to go back to the editor, download it again, and then just copy that CSS file back into our project. If I keep the same names, all I need to do is just copy the CSS file into my project and I don't have to edit any of the code. It's going to keep the same name. One trick that I can do is I can I can go up to search and I can replace. I have data theme A a few times already in my project. I've got six of them. And if I replace theme A with theme B, I just saved myself some typing. You can go up to the search menu and then towards the middle you have replace, which is looks like it's control H. What are you looking at? On the jQuery mobile, where you design the color. Look at that slider on the bottom. What does that do? Are that's just a preview of a particular widget. Just like up here, we have a preview that that's our header, that's our list item. There's a widget that we haven't used, but there's a slider. So oh, if we if we have an app like for music where we want to lower the volume, we have a widget. I'm going to run this on my devices. Uh, let me answer your question in one moment. Uh, go ahead and run this, and if it shows up on your device, virtual or real, great. If not, uh, call me over. Let's take uh, one more break. It's 8.33. We'll be back at 8.43. Hopefully then you've got your colors showing up on your device to customize it. But if not, call me over, and we'll be back in 10 minutes.